everybody. This is SF Vortex, and I'm your host. I'm Roger Lodge, and my resolution is to be the best darn SF host this side of Neptune. So what do you say we head down to the war room, and I'll start right now by hosting our special sci-fi movie review show. You know, 1996 was the year of the alien at the box office, as Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin not only destroyed the White House in Independence Day, they blew away the other big hit, Twister, at the box office as well. And Paramount finally released the eighth Star Trek movie, and Tim Burton brought to the big screen some pretty P.O.'d Martians. Here's a look at the films that will most be remembered from 1996. Typical commute on the LA freeways. Well, the theme of 1996, destroy the world. And whether by tornado or by angry green men, Earth was the biggest battleground at the theaters last year. But the most popular battleground in sci-fi would have to be right here in the war room. And look who's joining us again, folks. Robert Burnett is here, freelance sci-fi film critic and film editor as well. I like to call him the Warren Beatty of sci-fi. Also, Michael Logan is here, TV Guide reporter whose beats range from soaps to Star Trek. And folks, you know him as the editor of Sci-Fi Universe magazine. I know him as the Socrates of sci-fi. He is Mr. Mark Altman. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks. Okay. Always now, good to be here. let's get to my first question. All right, 1996. Big movies, a lot of excitement, a lot of big blockbuster box office hits, but which ones from 1996 will we still be talking about come the year 2000, Mark Altman? None of them. <laughs> None? I gotta tell you, I don't think that, uh, I don't think this was a particularly good year for science fiction. Unfortunately, I think we had a lot of movies uh, that uh, were accorded a lot of hype. Uh, there was uh, a lot of uh, uh, event pictures with big special effects, but ultimately I think that none of them had the characters and, and, and the excitement that we'll be talking about come the turn of the millennium. Michael Logan, you agree with that? I agree, except that I think we're always going to talk about Star Trek pictures. We, we do, we compare them. Do we have we've to? Got the, we've yes, got the, we yes, have we have to. Yes, we have to. For God's sake, million you know first contact. contact. We're, we're consistent. With, you know, Star Trek First Contact has some major pros and cons to it that we will be debating it and major we'll always cons. be talking about, uh, you know, I'll still be imitating Patrick Stewart. And I this... would make them pay for what they've done. What is that? No, wait, you know what? What is that? No, wait a second. We're going off topic here. You, what, what about it? I liked Independence Day. So did I. I liked Indep Independence Day. was a great film. You these guys, Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin said, hey, Let's make a movie about these gigantic flying saucers coming to Earth and blowing everything I'll up. And us fighting back. And they I'll did, tell you and something. Good. Rowan Emmerich and Dean Devlin have a great masterpiece in them. These are guys who love science fiction. They grew up on Star Wars. They want to make the next Star Wars. They didn't do it with ID4. It's a good film. They didn't it do it with some Stargate. Great, uh, how, no, why no, do you they think they've got a, a great know what? masterpiece? I, I think these guys have the right attitude. They, they are bringing back the matinee. Uh, you know, Saturday morning popcorn muncher. And I give them credit for that. I, I mean, and I really, I'm rooting for them because they're both really nice guys. They deserve all the success that they've uh, gotten. And I think that they've yet to make their, you know, their Star Wars, but I see it coming in the future. You definitely. guys know what it's time for? You know what it's time for, don't what you? What time is it, Rod? You know it's time for that. You know what it's time for. Stop to talking. Announce <laughs> oh. What our War Room viewers voted on is the number one movie of 1996. It was... Crow 2. Can I get a drum roll or something here? Barbed oh, wire. No, <laughs> it was Star Trek First Contact. Huh? Bah. That's right. No, That's no. right. Hey, wait a second. Don't put the that remote down. Put that remote here. down and duct tape, your, duct tape yourself to the sofa. Don't go anywhere, folks, because when we come back, when we come back, we got lots more happening right here in the war room. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you in a minute. All right, welcome back to Kate Mulgrew's favorite show, SF Vortex. I'm serious. You obviously didn't see last week's show. <laughs> We're still in the war room with Mark Altman, Robert Burnett, and Michael Logan to hash out the best flicks of 1996. All right, horror fans, we're in for a few screams with the films of last year. Let's take a look back at some of the blood and guts of 1996. Wow. All right, guys, which movie in 96 really scared you and sent chills up your spine. The Cable Guy. Oh, you mean horror <laughs> film, not horrible film. <laughs> Excuse me. Robert, well, you, <laughs> you know, not to go off on a rant here, but I'm sick of horror comedies, man. Where's Rosemary's Baby? Where's The Exorcist? Mm. Where's The Omen? Where's Dawn of the Dead? Where are the classic masters that I grew up with? Didn't you see Showgirls? Just kidding. <laughs> Michael, what do you think? I think Scream is excellent, and I, and, and I kind of wish it wasn't coming out at the year-end holiday 
it's the best know, a situation you'll be up. Feel good movie, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> if we waited until like the middle of January where nothing, we've seen everything and nothing else is playing, I think this would be a huge, huge hit. It's really good. I, I agree about the comedy, but this film has such great sardonic comedy oh, to well, the it. Great, the great thing about it's a, Scream. It's a great, you know, the more you are into slasher films, the better you appreciate this. It's, it's a really comedy, scary, really well acted, and very funny. I'll it's tell a you, comedy homage, and it's a great slasher movie unto itself. And it really goes a long way in making an argument why horror films are a good thing. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what really disappointed me. I'll tell you what disappointed me. Tell us what disappointed me. I'll tell you what disappointed me. I'll tell you what disappointed me. From Dust Till Dawn. When you have people on the... I, I, I look at Robert Rodriguez who did El Mariachi, which is just a wonderful debut film. Quentin Tarantino, Pulp Fiction, mm -hmm. Reservoir Dogs, two of the best films in the 1990s, and they conspire to do a horror movie. And these are guys who love horror movies, and they put out this garbage. Well, uh, great George Clooney gives a George wonderful Clooney, performance, yeah. but, but you know, it's just like these guys, they figure, oh, we're going to go off and have fun, but didn't really put any effort into it. And it, it, it's just such a disappointment and, and such a wasted opportunity because, you know, they could have made the phone book, and unfortunately they did. And they said that they were supposed to, I mean, these guys love exploitation cinema. They talked about Dawn of the Dead. They talked about Cronenberg. They talked about Carpenter. None of that was in From Dust Till Dawn. Do we agree? Crushing. Do we agree that horror is, is it's it's not what it was ten or fifteen years ago? Do no, horror's dead. That? You have to say it's a psychological thriller. It's but is Scream going to bring it back? Is this the first step in bringing back no, no. some great horror? No, I'll tell you what. It's the it's gonna, what's going to kill it because it's a self-reflexive. You know, it's parodying the conventions of the horror film, and that's usually the last thing, you know, the last nail in the coffin. When you get to that point, you're doing the self-reflexive parody. It means you're no longer taking that genre seriously, and I agree with Robert. Where is Rosemary's Baby? This was a top director, Roman Polanski, right. working on material, which was an A-picture. Robert Evans was the biggest producer in the business back then. And you don't have those kind of people doing movies Robert now. Evans of the Phantom fame? He was the top man. producer in the 1969. Let's yeah. move on to the next topic. You know, some of the biggest letdowns. Speaking of letdowns, speaking of the some of the biggest letdowns in '96 have been the long-anticipated sequels. You know, you, you know what I'm talking about here. Yeah, Escape first from contact LA, uh, The Crow, City of Angels, and of course the forgettable classic, The Island of Dr. Moreau. Let's take a look to refresh your memory. Wow. How about that crow? Huh? Now, which of these movies was the biggest letdown to you, Mark Altman? Well, they should have made the story about the making of the Island of Dr. Moreau instead of making Island of Dr. Moreau. That was far more interesting. I mean, all this craziness with Marlon Brando and the director being fired and Val Kilmer being this raging egomaniac. Uh, but I got to tell you, Escape from L.A. because Escape from New York is a cult classic. Love the film, and Escape from L.A. is amateurish trash. And uh, I wouldn't go a, that a far. It's amateurish. But don't trash. hold back. <laughs> no, I would Don't hold back on how you should. I read it. It's Am amateurish <laughs> trash. Had some great talent involved. Yeah. I think it wasn't as good as it could have been. But the worst. The, no. Do you think the the original picture was good enough to do a sequel to to begin with? No. Though? Absolutely. I mean, like, wait, oh, no. Oh, wait, let's talk about what really is the worst sequel. They didn't do a sequel. They did a remake. That was the problem. Let's no. talk it's about the, the worst sequel. The worst sequel of the year is The Crow 2. Absolutely. The Absolutely. Crow was a film that spoke to a generation of people the same way gothic music did in the early 80s. There's this wacky cult that exists around the cult and Brandon Lee, and they come out with a film that is incoherent. It has no story. It has no main character. But the it has only Courtney thing, Love doing that is the only thing Matt. That the whole Gotta movie is on that 80s. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> you know what? I don't film. have to get out of here. You were on such a roll. Go ahead. No, it, it, it was. It was, it was, a, it was an 80-minute ad for Gold Dust Woman. I mean, it's they should just trash. Put it out. It was awful. <laughs> so, these music video guys. I mean, they think Tony Scott's a great director. That's the problem. They all want to do that. music. They're all doing two-hour music videos. Where are the characters? That's what I want to know. Where, Where are the, the real characters? directors that know how to set up a shot? Well, well but you're talking about John Frankenheimer, right? Exactly. Great director. That's right. What went and wrong? he's doing Island Great of Dr. Moreau. He Great in, actor. Uh, Marlon Brando. Wait, 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 didn't Marlon there? Brando though, give a good performance in that movie? Can't be fun. Island of Dr. Moreau can't be fun. I mean, I where is the Marlon Brando of The Godfather? Where is the Marlon Brando <laughs> of the, you know, <laughs> the wild fun. one? Where is the Marlon Brando of, you know, Streetcar Named Desire? I he's don't know. What do you want? Moreau's He's wearing a bucket on his head. The guy is wearing a bucket on his head. He's a kabuki vampire. That's kind of cool. It's like, you know. A kabuki vampire. I'll tell you what all of America wants to know. Is that real cashmere? That's very nice. <laughs> we got to get out of here. Coming up Appreciate next that. in the war room, we're going to debate what the best fantasy flicks were in 1996 when SF Vortex continues. And let me tell you something else before we go. It's All right, we've all calmed down. Welcome back to SF Vortex, our big year-end review show. Don't get me too close to Mark Altman. Socrates of sci-fi. You're the Shemp of sci-fi after that last <laughs> segment. We are still in the war room with Michael Logan, Mark Altman, and Robert Burnett, by the way. Okay, folks, last year was a chock full of fantasy films for the whole family. You know, you remember the classics, Pinocchio, Matilda, 
Muppet Treasure Island, just to name a few. What's so funny? I'm working classic. The classic. The term classic. Yeah. classic. Yeah. Here's a Jack look at some of the top money grocers. <laughs> Try the one. All right, the best fantasy flick of 96 without question was Barbed Wire. <laughs> <laughs> we all have Michael, you agree No argument, no argument. <laughs> End of conversation, go ahead. But it was not James and the Giant Peach. Um, I love that book and it was a deeply disappointing picture. And I really liked the other movie based on the other old doll book, Matilda, that was one of my favorites. And uh, awesome. Eddie Murphy in The Nutty Professor was spectacularly was fun, good. comedic acting and great that effects. That was good. And no and barbed was, wire, but that was good. <laughs> Robert Burnett? Great to see Eddie Murphy come back in a big role, but for my money, my favorite fantasy film of the year, Romeo and Juliet. A beautifully realized vision that took place in a sort of alternate reality, the Blade Runner of Shakespeare movies. I never no thought question. of that. That's a very good point. It's though. a very interesting observation. I don't agree that Romeo and Juliet's a fantasy movie. Loved it, however. Right. Uh, I would say Hunchback of Notre Dame. <clears throat> uh, wonderful, lavish Disney Three animation. Three times I saw it. With my Scrambling. son Brandon. There you go. But I you know what was nice about it? It was adult. It was a f Disney film that adults could appreciate. Absolutely. It. Very sophisticated. And to me, more looks good as an animated character. Better than Not too shabby. All right, real quick, little quick prediction. Best sci-fi fl flick. Can I talk? A flick of 1997. Mark well, I'll tell you something. It's not going to be the Star Wars Special Edition. We've seen the film. Uh, I tell you, the extra footage is, is superfluous and unnecessary, and uh, I was really disappointed by it. Uh, but I will tell you this. My prediction is The Fifth Element, Luc Besson's film. Nobody knows anything about it. It's a secret of film. Coming out in May, that's going to be the one to beat. Robert Burnett, do you agree with that? Yeah, and Greedo shoots first. How lame is that? But I think <laughs> Starship Troopers. Okay. Paul Verhoeven's going to come back after Showgirls and blow everyone away. Best? I think Spielberg's going to do it again with Lost World and James, Ca James Cameron's Titanic. I think it's going to be the big picture. Did you say Spielberg's going to do it again? Yeah. You, you, you're implying that Jurassic Park was actually a good movie. No, that's a whole other world. Titanic? I don't think Titanic. I don't know if he's finished shooting it by uh, Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Best Titanic, if, he, if he's finished shooting it by uh, summer. <laughs> All right, there you have it, folks. That's it for the War Room today. I want to thank my guests, Mr. Mark Altman and Robert Burnett, Michael Logan. Don't go away, folks. There's much, much more to talk about as the vortex rolls on. We'll see you in a minute.